Welcome along, it's Tuesday chat time. Um, like I said, I'm on my um, my laptop so it might look a little bit different. <laughs> um, Alright, so today I wanted to talk about um, marketing for artists and the reason I thought about this one because I sort of was running out of time of what I was going to talk about. <coughs> I'll leave everything to the last minute. <laughs> But I went to a workshop on Sunday held um, by the Ideas Distillery and Shelley Pisani was the presenter and it was held here at our local art gallery and I think it was funded um, funded by the Ideas Distillery which I think is, mm, I'm not sure, don't hold me to this, I think it could have something to do with government but anyway. Um, so yeah, so it was free which was awesome and it was a full day so um, yeah it was really good so I thought um, it would probably be good to also share some tips with everyone about marketing for artists um, make sure you oh, hold on what am I doing make sure you um, comment or let me know if you can hear me no problem like I said I'm on my laptop so it looks a little bit different for me but I'm hoping it's all good. I'm hoping everyone can hear me. I'm sure you would have put in the comments by now if you can't. Um, I might even just set up on my big computer just so I might be able to see comments a little bit better. Oh, um, just bear with me a second. All right, okay, I can see comments over there better. So um, I can see Cheryl and Tracy are on. Hi guys, and yeah, thanks for confirming the sound. Okay, so um, marketing ideas sort of for artists. Well, I think the first and foremost, um, and I've been getting this drummed into me lately, I've, I've attended a lot of um, courses, I enrolled in a lot of online stuff, I've spent quite a few thousand on different things like learning how to run my membership, just, um, just all different art in general. <clears throat> Um, and I think the very first thing of being an artist, if you want to, if you want it to be more than a hobby, I suppose, is you have to paint or draw like you have to just um, master your craft, I suppose, whether that is whatever type of painting or drawing or whatever your focus is with your art, you've got to um, put in the hours essentially. Lucky for us, it's a skill and we can all learn it and get better at it. So that I think is the main thing, is definitely master your art. Um, and then once you're at a point, it makes it, I think, easier to then go into the marketing side of it. Hi, Kate and Mary Ann here too. <laughs> Probably all sick of me, they see me all the time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so first and foremost, you need to paint a lot. <clears throat> okay, you need to set time to get better and better and better. Okay, the better you get, of course, like I said, it'll be easier for your marketing. So then I think um, we talked about in this marketing class, which I've done a lot of work as well through different people um, and courses on, um, on telling your story. So you need, people want to know you, the, art, <coughs> you, the artist. Sorry, I should have brought a drink down here. Um, so that's why like when you're you are sort of um, that's why Facebook lives work really good for marketing um, even on your social media you, you really should try and include every now and again a picture of you or I know some people where a lot of us are introverted um, you could just start with just showing your hands in the work not just not just your artwork it needs to be like it needs to have you in it and every time you you do anything you need to try and include your story so a bit about you like so this is something you really need to sit down and um, sort of knuckle out so this is some of the stuff we were doing in this lesson uh, in this workshop we we spent quite a few hours actually <clears throat> trying to sort of go through you know think of things in the past you know your childhood were you inspired by things like what led you to become an artist or what 
leads you to paint the certain things you want to paint, you know, or maybe you you like to sculpt in clay and that. What led you to that? Like your story, um, you know, like mine's a bit about... I've always been an animal lover, so that's sort of... I don't know why. I've never, ever questioned that. I've always, always um, drawn animals. I don't know why. It's just something I've done. Um, yeah, so I, I... But I could deep do a deeper dive into why that would be. Why is that that I constantly just... Whatever I... If ever I'm painting or drawing, it's always going to be an animal. There'd be a reason. I just have to dive deeper into that, I suppose. Um, and, yeah, and, like, yeah, sort of how you got to where you are. Like, we had that, that tree change with um, most of you know. Um, moved to a farm and opened up opportunity. I was asked to teach um, art. And, and I just said yes to everything. <laughs> so, um, and so there's a story there. So there, everyone has a story. You might think it's not that interesting but other people like to know you so they like to they want to know like and trust you to buy off you okay so you need um to convert a cold audience to a warm audience by get, letting them get to know you and like they say there's um seven touch points before someone will make a purchase so they might get an email off you they might see a few social media posts you know um, they might see an ad you're running, but they, they say they need to sort of be drummed into them seven times before they'll, um, they'll purchase. And you do think, you think you're flogging a dead horse more or less. You, you sort of think, oh, I don't want to email them again or do another post because they're, they're going to be sick of me. But a lot of people don't even see, you're seeing it because you're posting it all the time and writing the emails but a lot of people don't even open the email or or the post hasn't shown up on their their feed like so yeah like you really do need to do the the um over and over but you don't want to be salesy like there's no one likes a really pushy marketing person do they so that's where they they just get to know you and when they like you they'll they'll um tend to purchase off you so getting your story is really important. Um, I've got a, I did another, I've done so many lessons and courses, but I did another one um, through United Art Space. It was an online one. <clears throat> and it was all about um, the why, what, who, where, and how. So you just go through and ask yourself why. So that's your... Um, story and like I said why like for me it would be why I choose pastel probably all the dry mediums which the reason I choose them is because I'm lazy <laughs> and I prefer the um the cleanup for them is really easy um and then um like why I paint animals sort of thing so that's my why um the what is what is your art I suppose what, you know, the colours you use, the style you use, whether that's abstract, realism, um, you know, surrealism, any, anything, whatever you do, um, intuitive, all of that. So your what, so that is what is your art. So imagine if you were trying, say if you had someone on the phone and they couldn't actually see your art, you've got to sort of sit and try and think of how you would explain your piece of art to someone who couldn't see it, okay, so that they might buy it. So you've got to really try and um, pick one piece of art probably and just really go into detail about about the type of brush strokes, some of the type of colours, sort of the movement in it, all that sort of stuff. So that's your what, your who, uh, who are your customers, um, which I'll go into the, that in a second as well. So who are the type of people that would buy your work. Uh, the where is where do you want to sell your work. So there's a lot of research needs to go into everything when you break it all down. So um, where is you've got to sit and think, well, do I want to sell in galleries? Do I want to sell online? Do I want to sell on market? All of that sort of stuff. Um, and how. So how are you going to sell um, to your where? So... Um, 
that again is research, finding the right people, the contacts, all that sort of stuff. So, um, so I had, whoop, hold on, I've just lost me. Hold on, sorry, I shot myself down. <laughs> okay, um, let me just check comments there. <clears throat> Make sure you ask if you've got any comments or want to, um, let me know if you guys, how you guys, I know a lot of you maybe not be marketing your work at the moment, but do you have social media maybe? Um, so um, then we need, so once we've figured out our story, then we need to know our customers in more detail. So that's your, they call it an ICA, it's an ideal customer avatar. And that's where you want to really, again, sit down. This is all, it's not something that you can do like in one sitting, it usually takes a lot of time and these things change over time as well. So um, your ideal customer. So. I have two ideal customers. Well, I don't even know who my one lot of ideal customer is, so that needs work. My ideal customer for my um, teaching side, um, that has come to me by doing it more because I seem to attract, um, like, probably women. Actually, I've had a couple of guys, but not often, so just women. Um, they're usually the kids have left home or they're teenagers, they're usually sort of 40 plus women, um, they're either retired or, or they've just got time back on their hands and they either used to love art in school and then life got in the way and they, um, now they've got time, they want to get back into their art or they've never done art and they just want to start a new hobby and again they've got that time on their hands. Um, and they're not, they don't need, you, you need to sort of look at what level, um, whether they're like middle income, high income, all of that, you've got to get right into the nitty gritty. Um, and that will also determine your pricing as well. So say, <clears throat> so for my membership, um, it's not high, I wouldn't class it as high cost. So um, I would think is probably middle income. Um, people would join. Um, it's actually when you realise how much is in it and the benefits for your mental health, it's actually very, very low cost. <laughs> so, um, but I just going off who is members, they're all similar. And so I can work out my ideal customer avatar through actually seeing who I attract anyway. But for my art, it's a little bit different because I've been focusing so much on teaching lately. I haven't really been selling as much, but I can look back on pieces I have sold before. But even if you've never sold anything, you can still sort of sit down and try and figure out a price price range. So with my art, especially my bigger work, that would be higher income um, earners because they're expensive. And just going off what I've sold, sort of track record. Um, I feel like, um, I, I don't know whether my art, this is where I was saying my art side of it needs a lot of work. Um, they definitely would be animal lovers or specific animal lovers. Um, I don't know so much whether quite a few, there's a mix between men and women who have bought my art in previous times. So, um, but yeah, so I need to sit down and really work on that one. So once you get a clear understanding of who your audience is, then you know how you can market to that particular person. So where all your marketing then is focused on that one person and it does make it easy to market because um, a lot of people with their ICAs, their ideal customer avatars, they'll even um, give them a name. So it, they'll bring it down to one person that they direct all their marketing to. Um, and I, it can be very hard because you do think, oh, but everyone's going to love my work. Or um, like I thought with my membership, it was for everyone, like all age brackets and everything, but it's actually not. It is, it is like it's open for anyone, but my ideal customer is not like an 18-year-old or, or um, 
60 year old male or you know I've found it it just seems to have um, I tracked those sort of people but you can ask yourself questions like um, sorry I'm just keeping an eye on comments um, which okay. um, sorry okay it never shows me the comments properly anyway all right <laughs> so for your ICA you could ask questions like um, what age group does your work appeal to does your work suit a specific gender so or whether it, it, it doesn't um, do your ideal customer live in a specific location um, or a particular job um, or where I saying about their cost like their what their income would be um, they you could even go as far as like what do they watch on TV um, you know what magazines are they you know member memberships like clubs societies what events do they attend so if you really know exactly like say if you sold your art um, Shelley actually I think use this as an example she does a lot of um, fabric design on pillows and everything so she's found her ideal customer maybe um, loves redecorating the house loves better home and gardens they're probably a lot younger um, they'd be women so but she can now target her marketing like if she wants to run an ad she could run an ad in a better homes and gardens magazine or target um, you know that sort of home decorating thing so that's where it really helps if you get your um, ideal customer avatar down pat so you know who would would be buying your work so that you can target your marketing to that okay so um, then we, of course we have um, social media is huge and I do think oh, I would need to find if I can find my phone I think I know some people don't want to market on social media but you really are missing out on a huge audience so let me just find um, why is my phone being weird um, hold on sorry I don't know why my phone's being stupid today but <laughs> okay so these were some statistics Shelly had up for social media so this was from the global statistics.com and this is just for Australian um, social media but Facebook has 18.63 um, million active users um, what was it social media use in Australia so this is this year Instagram has 14.5.05 million active users. Uh, so Facebook is one, then Instagram, then it goes to TikTok, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. So I think a good idea if you're new to social media is pick one and get good at it. Okay, so don't if you can get overrun and then you end up um, with so many and then you don't post to any because you just get overwhelmed so pick one and do it well so I would definitely my you this again comes down to your ideal customer so my customers for my membership are on Facebook um, and probably Instagram but Instagram tends to be a bit younger um, whereas Facebook's a bit older um, so I would pick either Facebook or Instagram or you could do both I do both because they cross post to each other so it is quite easy because meta owns them both you go into Facebook when you get a Facebook page um, you need a business page of course you can there's a planner it's free planner in there and you can set schedule all your posts for quite a few months in advance and um, you can tell it to post to Facebook or Instagram or both okay so it is those two work really well together so um, if but definitely find out who your market is um, 
before you sort of jump in. Like, I probably wouldn't go to Twitter, maybe. I'm not sure what Twitter really is. It's not Instagram's great for artists because it's very visual and it's like a gallery set up on there to show everyone. So um, Instagram's a really good one. But again, I think older um, people tend to use Facebook more. So yeah. Um, then LinkedIn, which I have, I don't know anything about LinkedIn. Um, it's, I think it's, uh, it's more business, um, corporate. It's not really for selling. It's more for, um, um, finding like, you know, a gal gallery owners are probably on there. Um, uh, fabric d purchases like, you know, any of those, um, corporate sort of stuff would be on there. So if your work is suited to that, it's probably a good idea to, to set a profile up maybe, I'm not sure. But again, it just gets overwhelming if you're with too many. And then TikTok, of course, is a much younger generation. So if your art suits a younger generation, then TikTok might be the one to go for. Um, but surprisingly, um, Pinterest, I've just started, I've had Pinterest forever, just with my own, you know, when you're decorating or you want inspiration, you go to Pinterest because it is a search engine. It's just uh, it's just like Google, but with pictures instead. Um, so, and you create your boards so you can save pin, like you can pin things to your board so you can go back and look at it. But um, I'm part of a f couple of groups with there's some, um, uh, artists in there that have like half a million followers on social media different platforms like they've got a lot of followers and they do like these are um you know there's another lady who does the subscription boxes actually where i learned about those and she um hers is a multi-million dollar business that she's running um and they've all done they all know their stats um for their social media and they say Pinterest is the best traffic driver. It drives over 50% of their traffic to their website or to wherever they want to um, drive it to. Because the beauty with Pinterest, when you put a pin up, um, you can add a, a um, URL. So say if I was doing a promotion for my art boxes, um, I could put a pin up with my art boxes there and have a link directly straight to my Artbox site. Or if I wanted to share a blog, I can put my blog post there and link it straight to the blog post. Or I could link straight to, um, if I was doing a live right here on Facebook, I could put a pin up and direct it straight to my Facebook page or my YouTube channel. Like So that's the beauty of Pinterest. And it lasts, it's a slow build, it lasts last forever essentially um and yeah it just it it stays there with your links and then you find over time it's not a it's not like say instagram or facebook where people what have 30 seconds or your post lasts for a day essentially before it's down their feed and they don't even see it whereas pinterest is something people will search if you have the right keywords and all the rest they could be searching years later and still finding your posts and getting linked across to it okay so it's definitely one to think about um, but again don't overwhelm yourselves just um, pick one or two and just get 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 regular the trick with social media is is to be regular with it okay um, consistent don't just post like one week, you know, like post, 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 post every day and then you forget about it for a month and then you'll come back and do another couple of posts and then forget about it for two weeks. Try and pick. I try and do every day and the scheduler in Facebook certainly makes that easier. So just once a week you could sit down and go, right, I'll put two hours aside and schedule my post for the next week or two weeks. Um, but, um, yeah, so don't... Don't um, just um, do all random stuff. Be like, say, if you can only do one post a week, just do one post um, every Monday or every Wednesday or whatever sort of suits you, just to get started. Um, all right, what else have I got here? Um, and then, of course, there's email marketing, 
which email marketing is very, very important as you get bigger like, and grow because um, Facebook, Instagram, all of those social media platforms you don't own, of course, and they could shut you down anytime. I um, know an artist, Carla Grace, was saying she's had 100,000 followers, I think, I think it was Facebook, and yeah, someone hacked her and she lost her page, so you lose all those followers. Um, you've got to start again. And I don't know if anyone's had much to deal with, um, with like Facebook and that. It's very hard to, for, with customer service, very hard to get in contact with them. You can imagine the millions of, of users. So a lot of times if you lose your Facebook page, um, you lose your following and it, you may get it back, but it could take months. So you cannot rely just because you've built up a huge following on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or any of them, you can't rely on that. You need to convert those followers as, into emails, okay? So your email list you own. Um, so you can email your followers at any time. Doesn't matter if the whole social media crashes, you've still got their emails and you can contact them. Um, so there's different ways to gather email lists. Um, so you could create a lead magnet. So that's, um, I have, I don't know, you guys may have seen, I have a free um, Pastel Beginners video series. It's a three part where I run through pastel paper, the different pastel papers, the different types of pastels, and then there's, we finish with an ocean tutorial. So that's a free lead mag magnet I have, and it just runs. I can send people to it myself, or I can, post every you know month or so reminding people that's there if they haven't gone through it yet um, or I can run an ad through Facebook um, to it and that then to to get access to that free part series they sign up for it um, so that's an email address I get then and of course you always need to have um, at the end of any email you send, you, you need to have an unsubscribe button so people can unsubscribe from you. Um, and essentially, you don't want people subscribed that aren't really opening your emails anyway, so you, it is better for them to unsubscribe, okay, because it's all to do with the algorithms and stuff. It is better. You, don't, you only want people's emails that legitimately want to hear from you. Okay, so don't get offended if people unsubscribe. <laughs> Because when you first start building an email list and people unsubscribe, you just think, why, what's wrong with me? But um, <laughs> that's got nothing to do with it. Okay, so, um, and also email, just, I don't know, if you're doing a mark, I'm going to do a, um, this ties in actually with another way to sell is face-to-face. -face. Um, I'm doing um, the Childers Festival coming up at the end of July. And... Um, I, so I've got a market stall there, I'll have my paintings, I'll have prints, I'll have greeting cards, I'll have leftover art boxes. You've got to have a variety of different pricing structures with markets because it's very rare to sell a big um, original painting at a market, but it's very good to get your name out there. Um, but what I'm going to do um, to also try and gather emails is I'll have... A, I might have flyers with a QR code that takes them to a, a page online that they can just um, fill in their email address and by doing that they'll, uh, they'll receive a free um, maybe a screensaver or something for their phone of one of my artworks. So you can give, usually you give something to receive an email address. Or I'll also just have the good old pen and paper if someone really loves my work, they might want to just um, be part of my email list anyway. So I'll also have that. But um, usually, yeah, to get a, an email list, they're giving you that, so you usually give them something. Um, so, but, yeah, so um, the other, like I was saying, uh, markets and um, festivals, that's a good one. That's really, I found markets were good if you're doing pet portraits. Markets aren't, aren't great. Um, a lot of artists don't have much success there. That's why I always managed to sell greeting cards because they were low cost uh, and a few prints. But it was 
a good way to get known for doing pet portraits because people come and talk to you, get your card. They may not want one right now, um, but if, say, their dog passes away, they know where to come to get a pet portrait. Or when they've got a gift coming up, you know, closer to Christmas, <clears throat> that sort of thing. So um, a lot of artists don't like markets, like I said, but um, they, they can be good for certain things. And I do find, I do like, I used to do a weekly market and it was just too much. Um, now I prefer to do like festival ones, like the Childers Festival. We have a Mary Poppins Festival. We have a Christmas night market. So just one every few months, I suppose. I, I don't mind doing that. And it's still a good way to get that person-to-person -person contact. Um, not everything is online. And then if you don't want to do social media and online, then you need to be doing more in-person stuff. So then, of course, we've got our galleries. Um, you need to probably go to um, think of different places you could hang your work, like coffee shops, um, maybe hospitals, dentists, doctors, all that sort of stuff. Um, I think it's turning off here. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, face-to-face, -face, that was another way. <clears throat> Sorry. And then I had... Media, let me see. Media and PR, so um, that would be magazines, um, radio, TV. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'd get on TV. <laughs> I'd die. <laughs> but again, for um, any media and stuff, they, they usually want a press release type of thing from you. So again, it comes back to getting clear on your story, your ideal customer, uh, what it is you do. You also, it's a good idea, usually with media, magazines, all that, usually have something in specific you want to pitch, like whether that you've got a gallery show coming up, um, like maybe the release of my art boxes is one, um, something to promote, like, you know, maybe a festival you're attending, maybe doing running a workshop. So you've got to sort of sit down and figure out, all right, what have I got to promote first? Um, and then you want to um, figure out your story and your pitch. Like, why would they want to put, like, what's interesting about that, that they're going to put that in their paper or magazine? Um, so... We, I picked up a couple of magazines around in me. There's another one called Fraser Scene, I think. Um, and I noticed this what's on. The Fraser, Fraser Scene is just a little one, I think. That is run by the council, I think. And um, that one is you just sort of let them know what you've got on and they'll put it in there. And also I found this what's on. Where was it? It says right at the top, usually somewhere in a magazine it'll tell you about um, contacting them, I suppose. So uh, this one has, if you have a local story to share, please contact us at what's on Fraser Coast at Outlook. We'd love to hear from you. So that's where you would pitch your idea, your story, and, yeah, see if, if it's interesting for them um, to put you in the magazine. Or there's another way, which I think this one is. This one's alive. I think you pay to go in this one. So you, like, you could correct me if I'm wrong. But I think from looking at it, and I went on their website, I couldn't really find any information on just sending a story to them. It seemed to be more about... Um, advertising so like they put a story in but I think they they write the story and take photos and all that sort of stuff so it, um, so there is yeah different different ways um, to do that um, and then of course um, I had art licensing like Etsy all of that if you want to turn your art into sort of wallpaper um, fabric design all of that sort of stuff. Um, again, you um, first thing you would need to do with a licensing, if you want to focus on that, is to um, create a portfolio of work. And then again, research. There's always research in who, um, who like the buyers 
for like who buys the fabrics and stuff um so you need to sort of figure that out um or greeting cards even like you could design a range of greeting cards and approach hallmark maybe or i think spotlight do their own fabric purchasing i think i'm not sure but that's the thing you've got to research if you're wanting to go down that field you have to get on on good old google and do a lot of research or even go to um to a shop and look on the back the back label usually has sort of sometimes they have where they may but uh, sometimes they actually have who the company is that is um who to contact like and then go down that rabbit hole um and again you got to write your story and your pitch about your work um and why you think it would make a great greeting card or great this great that so um yeah there's it, it never there's so many things um uh oh, with the media and promotion i forgot to mention podcasts as well um it's just really getting yourself out there so you've got to sit and think of all the different ways so um there's i've, I've been a pro no, i've been a, well i have been asked but I have to pay to be in a couple of books and they've just got other artists in there and it's a few thousand dollars for like a couple of pages so I've I haven't done it but it's a way they then you can then go I'm I'm a um, usually they make the Google number one top seller for the day or whatever so you can say I'm an um, number one best-selling author <laughs> in your pitch so um, Things like that, um, podcast. If you um, uh, quite often, you don't just get asked to go on a podcast. You have to approach the podcast, and again, tell them your story, give them a pitch, why they should have you on, why you're interesting, why you would suit their customers or their listeners. And the more podcasts you go on, as well, you can put that as like, I've been featured on this, 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 and um, so you're just slowly building up all these things. Um, and then I suppose the other main thing is um, just get involved, like get involved in your local area or just, um, you know, talk to other artists, uh, go and go to gallery openings, go to artist talks, just be seen. Um, and opportunities then sort of come, come up to you. People may want to collaborate with you. Once they get to know you and know your type of work, they might think, oh, this works great with me. Let's do a, a gallery exhibition together or things like that. So um, it is a matter of just sort of getting out there and getting in involved. And like with me, with my teaching, I've been doing regular classes in Harvey Bay, Maryborough, but um, I used to do workshops and I'm thinking I would like, because I feel like um, it's a bit stale, um, not that I haven't been advertising, which is my fault, but um, I'm thinking of running a couple of um, one-day workshops in different venues where I'll get to, you know, these are other, there's a art venue I'm looking at in Harvey Bay called The Collective and they, um, they're in a great spot and they have a whole different um, audience of, of ladies learning to paint and or being crafty than what I I have so it's a way for me to go and meet more people and then they might if they enjoy it they'll tell their friends and so don't get stuck in one thing try and sort of branch out into all different things okay but it, it is a lot <laughs> it's always a lot but I would definitely just start on really sitting down and and nutting out your story what why like your why what who where and how um and really get clear on on um why you you paint like what you love about it um yeah it, it really reflect on like your upbringing maybe and what inspired you and then um and then of course get clear on your ideal customer okay so really try and figure out that that will come more and more as you start to sell more and more um but you can definitely sort of try and figure out what it is about your art that might be suited to certain types of people so all right um 
All right, I'm just looking at some comments. I did. You love Pinterest and Kate's back from holidays. Yeah, so I'm just, um, I've actually, I've hired someone to do some Pinterest for me because I just don't have time. But I really do feel it's, um, Pinterest is a, a good marketing strategy in the background sort of thing that um, I think as it, it's like the quiet achiever. It's just sitting there slowly um, feeding people to um, to what you do, to different platforms you're on. Okay, so you enjoyed your holidays? Uh, and I slept in. That's all right. I was running around like took with my head cut off this morning, trying to get more um, Creative Spark art boxes out. And can Charlene missed the canvas session. That's fine, Charlene. I've um, that's inside um, the membership, so it's in the watch new in June. You can see the recording in there. So, um, all right. Uh, if you are interested in a Creative Spark art box, I don't know if you can see that the little polar bear back there. Oh, oh no, <laughs> I can't. I can't do it <laughs> there. <laughs> Um, that's the latest art box. <clears throat> there are only about five boxes left, so um, you need to get in. I haven't actually even um, sent an email out to everyone on that yet. I'm just trying to get on top of how many boxes I do have left because I'd hate to sell one and then not have the supplies. So I'm trying to get out all the existing subscriber boxes out. And then I know exactly how many I have left. So, but um, I will definitely post on on here on Facebook and, and email out everyone who's on my email list. So, okay, I think that's it. I hope um, I hope that's given you some ideas and some things to work on. And uh, um, I know a couple of ladies on here in my membership. Um, and Odette especially, she's been really doing a lot of pet portraits. So I think Odette, um, a job for you is to sit down and write your story and figure out your customer. <laughs> That's today's job. So, all right. Okay, um, I think that is it, guys. I can't see any more comments, but I'll go back through and make sure if I've missed any to answer them. And, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And... Um, I will talk to you all soon, and I will be back next Tuesday. We might even do a little, no, I might do a chat. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I always figure it out Monday night what I'm doing. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining me, guys, and um, have a great day. Bye.